Hudson. Um, I'm one of the organizers for the Honolulu Bigfoot Conference here in Honolulu. Um, I'm also one of the uh, senior investigators with the uh, Nobro uh, Native Oklahoma Bigfoot Research Organization. Uh, this year, 2021, I was an outstanding year. Uh, we were, had the impression that there may be some delays or uh, some cancelization due to the weather that was expected, but the weather actually turned out fine. Uh, the weather uh, was quite the opposite of what was predicted. And this year, the attendance was beyond what we were expecting. Um, I think we had a record, we don't have any numbers yet, but I think we had a record um, attendance here at the conference and the festival. Uh, we had a large number of vendors, we had over 60 vendors, uh, which is a, is, a, is a record setting for that one. So this year, I think, um, as, as some of them say, I think between the staff of Nobro and the Honobi, and, uh, the Honobi Bigfoot Conference, or Festival and Conference Committee, uh, I think they knocked out a park this year. I'm the yard guy. I mow yards in Tulsa and Brook Mare. Yeah, it's my hobby. Oh, I love it. I, I, it. This is just my ticket to the party. I don't care if I sell anything or not. I'm just here for the party. No, lots of stories. Uh, you know, lots of people I've talked to. Uh, too, too many to remember, actually. Hi, my name is Jason Frank. Uh, I have a Bigfoot website called uh, BigfootOfTheRockies.com. I also have a YouTube called Bigfoot of the Rockies Outdoor Adventures. Um, I've been an active researcher in Colorado and New Mexico since 2008. Um, I've had around 350 encounters with Bigfoot. So not not flat like full blown where I'm seeing them all the time, but where they're they're outside walking around, hitting the tent, talking. I'm not alone. I got, a, I got a whole bunch of guys that run with me. We, we've all had many of them. Um, the biggest thing there is we tend to go to the same spot over and over again because they know us. The Bigfoot aren't so shy. As soon as they know we're there, you know, the activity picks up pretty quick if they get the timing right. So, I love the area. I love the people. kind of just fell in love with it instantly and been trying to get my wife to move here ever since, but it ain't going to happen. been here every year since 2014. The speakers that they have, uh, the presenters, uh, I learned so much from each presentation uh, that that's, that's my favorite part of it and networking with other researchers that I know around the state or around the region, uh, meeting new folks. Uh, it's just a great uh, place for networking um, and uh, getting to know folks that are serious about Bigfoot research here in the state and across the region. Uh, so I always have a fantastic time. My sighting happened just about oh a mile or two south of here, uh, up on one of the ridges. It's called Baktuklo Mountain. That was in the uh, summer of 2014. Uh, my brother and I came on one of the Kaimishi Mountain Adventures expeditions, uh, and that's where we had our sighting. So yeah, this place is very special to me. Plus, I grew up in this part of the state. And so it's always been special to me. It's like coming home again. And uh, to have a sighting down here is even 
uh, just icing on the cake. Um, and uh, so this is definitely one of my favorite spots and uh, I try not to miss the conference. that we've seen in the past and it's just always so so much fun so the shop is buck adams cosmic curios on route 66 the website's just buck adams on 66.com So when you talk, you just mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So are you having fun? Yeah, fun. Mm -hmm. Where do you live? Mm -hmm. back, back. back, back over yonder. Yeah. Okay. So you are the real thing, man. So far, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I've learned some things. Got more things what to look out for. And, uh, you know, kind of like, want to do more research, really. I ain't getting an eerie feeling now. Now that I'm out here, and outside of the car. I'll have an eerie feeling. More kind of excited. We've had two. One was right west of Art City on the uh, Arkansas River. We actually found footprints in the sand, and I actually got pictures of them. The thing that was weird about it was the prints went down the riverside, and then they went up into the brush. And I'm all, you know, I've been on the river a lot, and most of the time when I go down there, I got some sort of shoes on because there's glass, you know, and other things that you can step on. And most of the people I go don't know go down there; they do not running around barefooted down there. So that was that story. And then the other one was north west of Arc City. And that one, the river was probably what is that, probably about two, three hundred yards away. And it was actually at uh, probably somewhere around October maybe. And there was a cornfield that was right next to it. And something, as we were coming down the road, something passed out in between us. And my initial reaction was that they hit like a deer. But it just didn't make any sense that it was a deer just by the way that what I seen was like something walking across the road. And I could see it like block out the headlight and then take like another step and block out the headlight again and it was gone. So after we passed them, my oldest son was sitting in the passenger seat and I was looking off to the side and he just grabbed a hold of me and just like shaking me telling me that he's seen something else walking in front of us um, but uh, I never would actually see something but he has seen it that would be my oldest son and 
he doesn't like to talk about it. You know, I think it's just one of those things where he's seen something that he's trying to figure out what it was. And he hasn't, you know, no explanation. successful conference, the 2021 Bigfoot, well, I mean be Bigfoot conference um, was an absolute success this year. We had many more people than we anticipated. Lots of people just came, enjoyed the, the whole conference and festival. We had more vendors than we ever could have uh, anticipated. The food was absolutely incredible. The speakers were phenomenal. And plus we had a film crew here. So we had an absolutely incredible time. And I just want everybody to know what a great time you'll have. It's a wonderful family event. Every year I do a class um, that is open to the public. It is a footprint casting class. It's for beginners. Not necessarily a Bigfoot cast, uh, Bigfoot footprint casting, but it could be for anything. Um, the children love it, uh, especially when we start doing the Bigfoot footprints. Uh, show them the uh, easy ways to do it, uh, creative um, techniques. Um, some of the things that we do is how to cast on an incline, in shallow dirt, uh, or in mud, or underwater. Uh, next year we're going to be doing something absolutely incredible. We're going to actually try to cast in snow. So it's going to be absolutely a wonderful time and everyone enjoyed it this year. I think this is my fourth year. Um, yeah, I believe four years now. Uh, another researcher had mentioned it and he invited me to go with him and and I said, absolutely. I just got into Bigfooting, and he uh, he said it was a blast, and you know there was some really good speakers that I'd like to have seen. Um, I was I was thoroughly uh, um, impressed by you know just the sheer uh, amount of people uh, that that's in, that involved in the Bigfoot and and the um, uh, speakers. It's really neat. I've run into some people I know and. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of nice. I guess it, it would be good if, if you brought your spouse. But uh, good food and uh, a lot of neat things to look at. M. K. Davis over the years, he is uh, that and Ron Moorhead is probably the two that I would say probably was most uh, impressive. Uh, just their knowledge and you know and uh, credibility. You know, credibility was the main thing. As I believe they're, you know, what they're doing is straight up and honest and just uh, I think they're in their knowledge of, of what they're talking about. Um, but he had a park on 
this side of the country of the woods and shine his headlights so that I could kind of see or run through the woods. And that's what he did. And so I get out. The wind's picked up quite a bit. I'd say it's probably 20, 22 miles an hour at this point. And uh, I run through the woods. I run over to the other launch. And uh, I have to kind of go down the slope to get my gear. And I've got my, my phone and my flashlight looking for it. And as I'm looking for it, I hear something walking over just a little ways out. And as many of you know, you can tell by the, the footsteps you hear if it's four, four feet or two. Definitely two feet. Um, and as I'm, you know, getting over closer to the, I guess it'd be the wet side, I could hear it was picking up and it was getting closer. And as it got closer, I started hearing like really heavy breathing. <laughs> And uh, I'm freaking out. I'm over there by myself. He's over there in the car. Doesn't have a clue what's going on. And I still, I've got to walk towards this thing, whatever it is, to get my gear. So I had a decision: Do I just leave it, <laughs> or you know, and run or what? Well, I ended up ran over, which now I'm upwind of whatever it is. So it's uh, whatever it is. It can smell me. And I heard it coming closer, quicker and quicker. And I grab my stuff and I split. And that really, that's a beautiful ending to the story. But um, about four months ago, same mountain, I've got a friend that has a, a cabin up um, a mile or two up, up on Buffalo at the end on West End. He lives in Dallas, or he did live in Dallas, and he used this cabin just to come up. And he's one of the, the pilots, he flies with us. And um, he had installed some cameras because he's been broken into a few times. And um, he since moved into this cabin. He no longer goes back and forth and stays here. But about four months ago, um, there's a fire tower house up there as well. He's got a cabin in the fire tower house, and there's a fire tower. He's got a camera up on the fire tower. And um, I don't know what they can look through some of the footage on the, on the camera if he heard some rustling outside or I don't know. But he sent me a picture of the show and um, he sent me a rock and we'll see this. And I, I know you guys can't see this, but this is the picture being retrieved. It's legit. It's not photoshopped. He took it right off of his camera. <laughs> and um, whatever this is, is about seven foot tall. We know that because we know the size of the pole he's standing next to. Um, and it's kind of by path. As you can see, that's the wire. But there is a path out there. Uh, but it, it just made me wonder, is this the creature that was stalking me <laughs> about a half a mile, two miles away from where this was taken? Uh, I don't know. I would love, I don't know if you guys ever do any kind of expeditions or whatnot over there on Buffalo Mountain, but there's something there. And uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting. I'm not going out by myself checking it out. I, in fact, I interact with some of the sounds, one of them are off that I've been talking to for years. Um, all about a week ago, I was out of my front deck when I heard something I've never heard before and chills went through me. And it, and again, and again, and I just went inside. I live alone and I have never had chills like that. And then, of course, it would come to Big Lip. So I'm just wondering. So, what's going on? It's getting darker and darker. We get our full year and we get everything. We get three of them that come up. And uh, at that time, I said, Man, go look. Man, look. And the other guy said, Okay, go look. And Bullseye, as soon as we look, we get three figures. We're about, maybe about 200 feet from, from the river. So we're about, about that. There's a mother that's holding, I literally see this through the clear, did not get recorded, but we got other videos on it, and it, it actually is on the internet, basically, the story. Um, and I have actually seen a mother pick up the big foot over the head. I gotta admit, I'm a Shelly 
Covington, Montana fan. I, uh, I honestly, I kind of uh, envy her. She's also very wise, very smart, very methodical, very logical. I really appreciate that kind of approach. You know, a lot of times in the Sasquatch world, people their their feelings get involved, and sometimes they project their feelings on what they want to find, and it tends to taint that kind of stuff. Gosh, I'm pretty sure it could support a few dinosaurs. Um, the valleys are are just deep, and the hills are tall. Trees are everywhere. Water is everywhere. Every there's streams everywhere over here. It's a lot different. A lot of springs too, flowing streams. It's uh, a lot different than where I'm from. This time, it's just it's amazing. You know, me being from Northwest Oklahoma. You know, you get out here and and you're just in this room with you know a hundred people and everybody's wearing a Bigfoot shirt and it's just it's kind of culture shock to be in the presence of so many people that believe or are open to the idea of their existence. It's just, it's honestly, it's awesome.